I was visiting with Tess, everyone's favorite shepherdess earlier, for an important meeting, more on that later. By chance, when I arrived, I happened to walk in just as Tess was starting the sheep show. Tess has an Airbnb house on her farm, and she likes to give the guests the farm experience. So for our Airbnb, we have a lot of guests that are really interested in, um, in experiencing sheep. I've called this the sheep show because it's an opportunity for kids, oftentimes from the city, um, who haven't had a chance to be with a livestock to use little pea pellets and uh, this kind of like seized candy for sheep, you know. And they, um, they get to move the sheep and put them in a new pasture and stuff like that. Girl! <laughs> she likes to eat. <laughs> this is the one that was on the chain hoist and look at her now. We didn't give up on her, we freed after her. Sheep do not have teeth on the top, they only have teeth on the bottom. So this is George. George was a Bureau of Land Management donkey that was um, captured and sold off. And then uh, he was sold to a farmer and that farmer couldn't use him anymore. So then I got to buy him. And his job is to keep dogs from hurting his boys. These are his, his ram boys. He's not a young guy at all, but he is really good at caring for his baby, so we, we call him Uncle George. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but look at how kind and soft his eyes are. Mm -hmm. How does he protect them? Uh, if he sees he do? a dog, he'll go and stomp the dog. Mm. That's what he did. Like if a dog were to get into the cat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Or coyotes. Okay. He would kick the heck out of the dog, okay. uh, out of the coyotes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, he has such a strong braying that when he's, when he's here, he could tell me if anybody comes in. In the past, my reasons for visiting Tess were either to buy sheep, learn how to milk sheep, or make other educational content on a whole host of subjects. Many of you by now have heard of the documentary film that I made for the Abundance Plus Network. That documentary is set to release Friday, September 10th on Abundance Plus. But that was just the pilot for a series about people who leave wherever they are to come homestead and realize their homesteading dream in North Idaho. Justin Rhodes, who owns Abundance Plus, loved the film I made and said, go make some more. I'm really excited to announce that the next documentary I'm making in that series will be featuring Tess and her amazing story. Tess was a motocross racing vocational nurse turned doctor of oriental medicine, turned sheep rancher. Her story is so rich and inspirational, it's such an honor for me to be able to tell it. Once the business side of it was worked out, I met with Tess to interview her to get all the details of her story so I could start putting the pieces together. So we just wrapped up, I don't know how many hours that we've been <laughs> sitting here, like how many pages of notes. So Tess, how do you feel about being the star of my next documentary that's gonna be on Abundance Plus? <laughs> well, it's wonderful to have an opportunity to talk to people that have the same value system and the same interest that I have in keeping keeping care of the land and in grass-fed homesteading and you know seeing that what is possible. How are you feeling about the process here like in, in moving forward with the production of the story? I trust you. I've had such really good results with all of the video work that you've done um, and I've met so many people and and that has served so well for connecting me with the same minded people who want grass-fed homestead information. Um, so I have a lot of trust in that you're going to um, capture that in a way that conveys these ideas. Even though my ideas may seem a little bit all over the place and too many stories, um, I think I have confidence that you'll you'll make something out of it that people can watch. Thank you, I appreciate your confidence. It's getting late in the season here in North Idaho, so we had to start production on it 
quickly. I spent most of today with Tess for day one of filming the documentary. Here's a look at some of the footage I got today. As a young girl, the fields were mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl Daydreamer, kidnap me Take me back, all the way back to them When I was filming the acupuncture sequence, just out of curiosity, not for the film, I asked Tess, hey, what are the different colors on the end of the needles? What do they mean? So to answer your question, Dan, acupuncture needles come in all different sizes and um, diameters, and those are used for various different parts of the body. For instance, these are very tiny. And then you have um, the next size, typically is what is in the ear. This is sort of more a standard size. So then I tap. And that, so that tap is just a tap. And then once it is in, then I do what I call, uh, it's almost like you're turning in the light bulb or you're unscrewing the light bulb. It's a very subtle thing, but you know the difference. You are putting in something or you're taking out something. So you're either dispersing the energy from that area or adding energy to that area. They're just to make a signal to the body. So they don't put anything in, they don't take anything out, they just make a signal. I like to liken it to um, my horses can do every kind of maneuver out in the corral and if I get in sync with them they know that my leg means we're going to do this move or my or if I'm in front of them they're going to stop go this way you know so it's a prompt similarly the acupuncture prompts the body I go back in a couple days for day two of filming which hopefully will be the last day of filming and then we can move it into post-production and get this out on abundance plus as soon as possible